So today, we're launching the largest left of labour, working class and socialist electoral alternative this country has seen for 60 years. Well, Mr. Morris, Congress and friends, can I formally welcome you to the TUSC 2015 conference. Uh, my name is Dave Nellis, I'm uh, the National Chair. Uh, and thanks to all of you, particularly who travelled some distance to be here today. Introducing this morning's uh, session and introducing uh, the speakers you'll see uh, to your left and my right on the platform, uh, it's clear that in just over 100 days' time, on May the 7th, 2015, there'll be millions of working class people in this country that will be looking forward to the day, the chance to get rid of uh, a Tory and Liberal Democrat coalition that's been responsible for a widening of gap between the rich and the rest in this uh, country, freezing of public sector wages, cutting hundreds of thousands of uh, jobs, all issues which I'm sure uh, my comrades to my right on the platform will be addressing shortly when they make their uh, uh, remarks. And we have here today for you leading representatives of the transport workers, of the prison officers, of the uh, teachers and civil servants. And in my city of Coventry, um, Labour controlled for almost all of the last 80 years. The plans have been drawn up for the budget which will come in in the next financial year, April of this uh, year, to close virtually every library, every community centre, every children's centre, every family centre, every adult education centre, even every public toilet. 100 public buildings and 1,000 staff in those uh, public uh, buildings. We had a consultation meeting a couple of weeks ago at which not one of the 54 elected councillors in Coventry came to listen to the public. They stood behind the uh, officers and let them take the, uh, the flat. Explain why after £55 million worth of cuts in the city, it was necessary to have another £50 million in the next three years. And the Director of Finance got up in that meeting and was asked the question, surely there's a general election coming on May the, uh, the 7th. That'll make a difference. You're a Labour-controlled authority. You want to see a Labour government taking uh, uh, office? And he said, and I took his words down uh, verbatim, um, austerity is here to stay. There is no light at the end of the tunnel. I have examined in detail the positions of the main parties and there is very little difference between the financial plans. The picture is broadly the same. That's why he explained whoever won the election on May the 7th, he is a director of finance in Coventry, had to plan for another £50 million pounds worth of cuts. Now, we, Tusk, were formed five years ago this month, co-founded by the late Bob Crow, then the General Secretary of the Transport Union, the RMT, because we don't accept that picture should be broadly the same, and we're going to do something about it. So today, we're launching the largest left of Labour, working class and socialist electoral alternative this country has seen for 60 years. Now, we're able to say we will be standing over 100 anti-austerity parliamentary candidates in every major town and city in the country. That should be sufficient to entitle us for the first time to TV election broadcasts in England, Wales and Scotland. And, at least as importantly, because of the hundreds of battles that are going to come in the next few months, in each one of those major towns and cities, over each one of those libraries, community centres, adult education centres, children and family centres, like in Coventry, we announced today we are seeking to stand 1,000 anti-cuts candidates, trade union activists and champions of their local communities. And although in 99% of cases there is no difference between Tory and Labour councillors on those councils making cuts, there are a handful of Labour councillors who have the courage and the principles to stand with their communities rather than impose cuts on their communities and some of the best of those Labour councillors, now ex-Labour councillors, now expelled from the Labour Party 
are here with us today from Southampton, from Hull and from Leicester and you will hear from them later on in today about their battles and hopefully how we together, you and they, can mount a challenge in May against cuts and against the austerity. Now, despite that announcement, 1,000 parliamentary candidates, 1,000, sorry, 100 parliamentary candidates, 1,000 council candidates, that will give us the sixth largest presence, the sixth largest party standing in those elections in May. Uh, we've had no contact from the broadcasters about the leadership uh, debates that have been uh, <laughs> occupying their minds the last few days. I would just say, by the way, if uh, David Cameron isn't turning up and the BBC are leaving the podium empty, I may well be in the wings waiting. Now, <laughs> so we've suggested an alternative. Um, I wrote uh, on behalf of the steering committee in January and again uh, in this month, in, in, uh, in December and again in, in January, suggesting to the Greens and through them to the uh, broadcast media in general, the BBC in particular, who organise these things on behalf of all the broadcast media, that there should be two debates taking place. And to a certain extent, that's what seems to be arranged uh, in the last uh, couple of days. If you like, a premiership and a championship debate. The first between those major parties who could be the core to forming a government after the general election, and the second between those parties who are standing nationally sufficient candidates to qualify for a TV uh, <coughs> electoral broadcast, but wouldn't be saying that they themselves could form a government. And Tusk should be in that second group. The seven parties that have been established for the second debate announced in the last 48 hours does not include an explicit working class and socialist anti-austerity alternative which Tusk is the only party in these elections putting uh, uh, forward. So I suspect what we'll have to do in the next uh, three or four months is the traditional work of street work, of stalls, of canvassing, of campaigning in our towns and uh, cities, of using social media as best uh, uh, we can. Because seven years of austerity, where we've been told that is the only way in which the damage to the British economy, triggered by the gambling and speculation of the bankers, could be uh, addressed. We have to put an alternative to that. And tomorrow, in Greece, it is likely that the Greek uh, party of uh, Syriza will become the largest party and possibly from tomorrow in government in uh, Greece itself. That will be a challenge that is laid down to austerity across Europe. The votes for Syriza will echo, will reverberate throughout the whole of Europe. And there's absolutely no reason why a movement and challenge to austerity cannot be built in Britain to that same uh, extent. That's what Tusk puts in front of itself. That's what today's conference is all about. And thanks very much to all of you for attending.